Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. So this is a project that I've been working on for a very long time and well, it is a keyboard, but not just any keyboard, it's an Arduino keyboard. And that allows you to reprogram it however you like. It works just like a keyboard, you plug it into a computer and it just works, you can use it as a keyboard, but you can have all the buttons do basically whatever you want. Uh, you can have them control all the things that are connected to it. So it's very, very customizable and also really versatile. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you kind of my process, how I designed it, how my struggles are and where I am at right now. So I started quite a few months ago uh, just kind of playing around with the idea. I was doing some other stuff in Arduino when I read about that you can use the Arduino Leonardo and the Arduino Micro, which are both based on the 80 Mega 32U4 processor. Uh, you can use them as an input device directly to the computer because instead of relying on a separate USB controller, the USB controller is built into the main microchip. This basically means that your Arduino can send keyboard and mouse commands to your computer directly as if it was a keyboard or a mouse respectively. This of course immediately gave me the idea to make a custom keyboard myself using that technology. So this is the first kind of uh, prototype that I did. I designed the casing in Fusion 360, used some uh, Cherry MX brown keys that I had from an old keyboard. I just basically unsoldered all the, all the keys. I was that excited to uh, do the project. I even unsoldered all the tiny little uh, diodes that were used on that keyboard to reuse them because I didn't want to wait till the other diodes that I ordered arrived from China. Then I basically just connected it up to an Arduino directly. And the way that I am um, using all these keys, which are of course way more than Arduino as inputs on the Arduino, is that I'm using a matrix. On this keyboard here, I'm using an 8x9 matrix. So, as you can see in this drawing, the keys are arranged in rows and columns. If you want to now read out the keys, then I apply a voltage to a certain column, and then I read out all the rows and see how, where the key is pressed. And then I disable that column again and move on to the next column and then read out all the rows for that. And thanks to the diodes that actually works without uh, sending any currents any other ways. So I'm basically just going through all of them really fast in just a couple of microseconds and you really couldn't tell it as a user and then I am saving all these values in a 2D array and matching it with the corresponding letters that I've programmed in, which are then sent to the computer. There was quite a bit of tweaking with the code to get especially modifier keys uh, to work properly, and there were some other bugs that had me press some weird combinations. But it is working fully now, and as you can see it's a smaller keyboard, that's why it has an function layout, so there are even two different layouts, so if I press the function key, uh, then the keys have a different meaning, so I can have my F keys up here instead of the numbers, and a whole bunch of other things. So that was fine and dandy. I had my first little keyboard working, but it was all wired up manually, it took me forever to wire that up, and I had to use a full Arduino in it, so it's not really that cost effective and labor effective. So what I wanted to do next is design a PCB for it. And since I've never designed a PCB for before, that was quite the adventure. I'm using Eagle, as that is the program that I found uh, the most recommended. And after a few tutorials, I kind of got into it and started learning about it. The schematics I just copied from what I kind of found online and did some changes to make it work for what I did. And then I did some couple test PCBs to kind of get to know the program. 
but then I decided it probably would be a better idea to start off with something smaller, like a keypad, instead of a full-size keyboard, since it is kind of expensive to prototype on that kind of a scale. So I designed the PCB for this little 20 key keypad that you could use as a number pad or you can use it as a macro pad or whatever you want. And since I didn't want to use an Arduino separately, I built the Arduino into it basically. And building an Arduino into it is almost a bit of an overstatement. The 80 mega 32 u 4 really doesn't need much at all outside of just some couple power regulators and some decoupling capacitors and the quartz. So it is a very, very easy to build uh, chip. So I just kind of copied the uh, schematics together from what I found from other people building boards with this chip. And about at that time, PCBWay contacted me and asked me if I wanted to collaborate with them. And I was like, uh, are you guys mind readers or something? Because I was basically just working on my first ever PCB and then a PCB manufacturing company contacts me just out of the blue. And of course I agreed. So we started working together and I sent them the files and they had some feedback uh, because I didn't quite export them correctly and were very helpful to get all the files in order so that they know how to uh, work with them. And then just, oops. And then, just like a week later, I already had these beautiful PCBs in the mail. And I have to say, they really look very, very professional. I chose the black sales screen, which didn't even cost any extra, because I just think it looks a lot better than the green. And it has all the text on it, and all nicely etched in. It even is two-sided, because I couldn't fit all the traces on one side. Um, the best thing is that a pack of 10 of these would have only cost me $5. That is just a very, very, very good deal. And so on, as long as you're staying under 10 by 10 centimeters, you can get a pack of 10 boards made for just $5 as well. To make assembling the PCBs a bit easier, I also had them make a stencil, which basically has all the cutouts where I need to apply solder paste to the board. This allows me to just kind of put a bit of solder paste down, use a scraper, and then all the pins already have this perfect amount of solder paste on them, instead of me having to put them manually on there. You could also have PCB ways assemble the PCBs for you, but since I don't know yet if the circuit is actually going to work, I wanted to do it myself. But for only $88, you can get a pack of 10 of these fully assembled. So when I got them, I of course started immediately uh, assembling one of them, uh, that is that one, and I put all the parts on it after I got them. I haven't, didn't put the LEDs on there quite yet, because I, they didn't arrive at the time yet and I could, really couldn't wait. So this one is using some Gatoron blue switches, um, it's fully assembled. It just really looks like it, like it is a professional pro product. So next step was to get it actually working with the software. And to program the microchip for the first time, I built in this six pin header back here, which allows me to use a programming board like this USB tiny SP board, uh, which basically plugs into here and this plugs into the computer to program a bootloader onto the microchip. Promised by Imperial Team. Did that answer your question? I didn't have a question. Okay, well I'll be here when you need me. So using the USB Tiny ISP, I programmed the bootloader onto the microchip, which basically is a little bit of software that allows it to communicate through the USB port with the computer. So after that, I should be able to just plug in a USB cable, which is USB Type-C, because why would I use any other connector? It is a little bit more expensive, but I think it's absolutely worth it. And connect it up to my computer, and it should just basically show up as an Arduino. Well, it should. I tried a bunch of different things. Uh, it says that the bootloader burned on properly, but 
that don't really have a way of verifying that and it didn't show up uh, on my Linux system at all and on the Windows it recognizes that there is something plugged in but it can't talk to it at all. So one reason might be because I just bought uh, some random cheap uh, chips from China that might have something to do with it or my secret should be fine. Uh, I asked on some forums and they did have some feedback but I thought it in uh, those parts but it should basically work. It's the same as uh, the other Arduino circuits so that shouldn't be the problem. Now you can see I put it, uh, together another board here and I uh, have also sawed around some other parts to it to try and get it to work and a reset switch and whatnot. Uh, also a cable in case of the, that the connector should be the problem or something but I didn't really get it to work yet. Now I am still gonna try and figure it, this out at some point but for now I have to kind of put it on the back burner. But maybe someone in the audience has an idea and you can leave it down below and maybe we can get it to work together. So I hope you liked this video and found it interesting. If you did, please leave a like down below and you can also leave comments if you want to see any other uh, parts of this process a bit more in detail. I also played around with quite a few different uh, switch types and maybe if you're interested I could make a video about that. Just leave me comments down below what parts you're interested in. And if you want to follow my progress more, you can check it out on social media, links down below. So thanks for watching and until next time.